When a researcher wants to conduct a piece of research or they have a question they would like to ask, they need to ask it to a sample of people. They need a population to study. Now, the group of people that can take part in the research could be anyone. Now, this could be a group of students. It could be a small town. It could be a particular age group. And this group that could all potentially take part in the study are called the survey population. Now, of this survey population, this is too big for the researcher to study. They need to study a smaller group to make it more manageable. This is what we call the sample. And this would be the small sample group they study. An individual within that sample is a sampling unit. And if a sample member leaves, we call this sample attrition. Now, when conducting sampling, we need to make sure that the sample selected is representative of the wider group. So essentially, the small group we are studying reflects the proportions, the makeup of the larger group. And this is what we'd be calling a representative sample. A non-representative sample is, is quite the opposite, is a sample which doesn't reflect the wider group. And therefore, any results you gather from that unrepresentative sample is, is not going to be uh, sort of a true reflection of the group being studied. The first sampling technique is a random sample. Now, in this case, the researcher will use the sampling frame and will select a group of people at random. Now, this random sample is effectively uh, taking people from any anyone from the list, and it's, it's similar to putting names in a hat. The next sampling technique is systematic sampling, or systematic random sampling, as it's sometimes called. Now, this involves the researcher taking the sampling frame again and working their way down the list, and it could be selecting every second person, third person, or fourth person from the list of the sample. The researcher will then select these individuals to take part in the study and it does it has an element of, of random selection in it in the sense that the researcher has the sample has been selected by uh, the formula of selecting every nth person on the list stratified sampling is again slightly different this is where the researcher will take the survey population and will organize them into strata or categories so in this case red blue and green the researcher will then select a sample from the strata to try and ensure that the sample selected is proportional to the wider survey population and therefore is representative. Multi-stage sampling involves a combination of, of multiple sampling approaches. So in this case, the researcher may use stratified sampling and organize the survey population into the categories, the strata of red, blue, green. They will then select a sample from that strata. The researcher could then combine this with a second method. So in this case, if they were to use random sampling and then randomly select some individuals from that uh, original sample. Again, this way is, is trying to remove bias or potential selection by the researcher by using multiple stages of sampling. Volunteer sample does tend to be slightly more unrepresentative. So a volunteer sample is the researcher presents their question and it asks for volunteers. And effectively, people will come forward to take part in the research. Now, as I said, the people who come forward often have a motive or some reason why they want to take part. So the sample has its own bias in producing or taking part in the research, but also may not be representative of the wider survey population. Quota sampling is a sampling method where the researcher has been given a question to ask to a sample and effectively they need to find a or fill a quota. So this could be they need to find five people to take part in the survey. Now, this involves the researcher essentially looking for the five closest people to take part in their survey. As a result, this means the sample may not be representative of the entire survey population because these five people will likely be located in one place in a similar time period uh, and therefore it's not going to be representative of the entire group. Snowball sampling is the researcher is looking for an individual or a person with a specific interest or characteristic and sometimes these are harder to find. Once the researcher has found one person with that trait they will then make reference to someone else and they pass their details to the researcher. The researcher, the second person will then give the researcher a name of someone else and then someone else 
and someone else. And the researcher gathers a sample in this way through contacts and being referred to the next person. Often, again, whether these samples be representative is difficult because you're looking for a very specific trait and obviously people, these people may share similar characteristics or, or values. A non-representative sample is, as it suggests, it's a sample where it is deliberately unrepresentative. Um, and this might be for a specific reason. So in this case, the researcher wants to speak to uh, the red characters and therefore the sample is made up entirely of people who are red. Um, this means that again, the sample is unrepresentative, but for the purpose of the research, this is necessary.